Let's talk about uh, your dear friend and fellow uh, comedic icon, Steve Martin, or as yes. you like to know, Mr. Steve Martin. You and he do this very funny show together, hilarious show that you've been taking around the world. When, this whole, when this whole pandemic hit, you guys were in, were you in Ireland? When we were, uh, it was unbelievable. We had, we had left, you know, it was very interesting because we kept thinking, should we cancel this? Can we cancel? This is like the week before. I think we flew over on March 6th and we performed the next night in Glasgow, Scotland. And the next night we were in Dublin. And after our show, I was back in the hotel, it was around three in the morning, um, Dublin time. And I'm seeing the president say, uh, everyone must, you know, get out in 24 hours. You know, of course, Trump forgot to mention not, but you have more time if you're Americans or if you're in Ireland or the UK. He just left that. Yeah, busy. Yeah. And um, so we frantically got out and, and that was it. So I got back to LA on the 13th of March. But it was harrowing. We were, and also we were, it was confusing. You know, we questioned whether we should be doing shows, but the, the government was saying it was fine and doctors were saying it was fine. It was a very strange messaging at that time. Part of your act that you do with Steve is you two really, you really go at each other. You're good friends in real life, but you tell these savage jokes about <laughs> it. I've seen you guys do it several times and I weep, it's so funny, but it's brutal. And I was thinking, they must love that in the UK. The Irish love it and the UK Irish. love it. In America, sometimes people say, oh, that, that was a little mean. That was mean, that was hurtful. That was hurtful, hurt. but in, in, I would think in Ireland, they must have just gone crazy for it. Oh, they loved it. Um, Steve says of me, you know what I love about performing with Marty? No paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll say to Steve, you look fantastic. And I guess the secret is that you've looked 70 since you were 30. <laughs> and yet people will come up to him and say, oh, big fan, Angela Lansbury. Yeah. <laughs> so, and what happens, the Irish probably sit there and just, they love it. They just nod and go like, that's right. You know what I mean? Oh, take the piss out of me. Oh, uh, like to take the piss out of me. Yeah. Well, no, 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 and I have, you know, my father's born and raised in Cross Glen, County Armagh, just over the border in the north. My father was very sarcastic, and I think there was even times when I would do Jiminy Glick, and I'd think, oh, I'm channeling my father a little bit. Really? You know, Marty. Somebody yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a tape of you know, my, me interviewing my father, and Marty, of course, is taking singing lessons, and of course, has no chance of hell of ever developing into any sort of singing talent. But that's not the point. The point that he's interested and you know, you hear me laughing in the background. It was all, that's the way it was done. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember one time my um, cousins, Patrick and Oliver, uh, and I sat up, you know, my, my father was born and raised in a bar, Shorts Bar, that's still there, run by my aunt Rosaline. And we sat up until about five in the morning. You know, you start off uh, drinking beer and then you switch to whiskey. And we were talking about families and people would cry. And you know, it was one of those nights. And then around 8.30 in the morning, I came down the first one, very bleary eyed and Uncle Patty was, my brother and father's brother was cleaning out the glasses and he just looked at me and said, and how did the character assassination go last night, Mark? <laughs> And it's in the genes. We still do it. I mean, yeah. I've been in this country for 120 years, and all we want to do is sit around and uh, talk treason about each other. And how much do I love insulting you? You look like Mr. Rogers if Mr. Rogers drank before each show. <laughs> and I mean that with love. <laughs> well, Remember I once said to you that whatever cosmetic surgery you'd had, mm -hmm. and you'd clearly had a lot, 20% more and I think you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wishing, yes. I'm wishing I had had all the work that we all know I need to get done. <laughs> I wish I had had it done just before this quarantine. Because we get to wear the face mask. I was thinking the same thing. About yourself or about me? About you. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> Be honest with me, Marty. If I went and I got crazy stuff done, I mean, uh -huh. really crazy, I feel like you would, in front of everybody, would you call me out on it or would you let it go? No, you see, in that case, I wouldn't say a thing. I'd say, boy, someone got a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about in my show about how cosmetic surgery does not work in a man because you get this look. <laughs> yes. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> what a wonderful story. <laughs> <laughs> and no one says, who's that 37-year-old dude? Right. Say, who's the 70-year-old who's been in a fire? <laughs> and the problem I just, I've lost weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's also the problem is it's the same face when you get bad news. Oh, did you hear so and so's mother died? It's the same face that you're stuck with. I'm going to get tons of work done during this quarantine. Tons. They're going to hack <laughs> off huge sections of me. So you're going to go to that section of your house, which is a full hospital. Yes, I, yeah. have a, I have a whole wing of the house that's just, just, and there are surgeons standing by and they're gonna go to town to bring the boy. Oh, you go to Conan's house and, and, and he'll say, would you like a beer? Would you like an IV drip? I mean, it's just natural <laughs> for you to have medical information going on because of your cosmetic needs.